Jesus, how are you today? Y'all all right? Yes. Y'all sure y'all all right? Yes, sir. All right. Lots been going on. Um, the, the name of today's uh, class is going to be rather short, but I'm going to title it Unite in Unity for the Cause. Unite in Unity for the Cause. Now, one of the things that I tend to do in my particular teachings is that I tend to stay pretty basic and I'm gonna tell you the reason why because I know we like the deep we like the deep stuff the uh, the, 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 the 24 uh, the, the, the 12 feathers the 24 elders and hawkers and all that we want to go into the seven heads and the plagues and these things are nice to know but if you really examine what's been going on with our people they don't fall out of this truth because of they did not understand the uh, the 12 feathers. They don't fall out because they didn't understand the beasts and Daniels. They fall out because of basic law that pertains to how we deal with each other. And that has everything to do with what happened to us when we got off those slave ships. You know, reality teaches us something. Reality teaches us where our problems really lie at. It teaches us the facts. It points to our problem. Um, let's see. The five sets of laws in the Bible, what are they? What are the five sets of laws in the Bible? And I, I gave you an answer by saying, what are the five sets? Because I'm already letting you know that there's a certain amount of them. Now, I know the majority of y'all have been here for quite some time, so I'm not really speaking to a new group of people. How many here are rel relatively new? Hands up high so I can see. One, two, so it's mainly women. Any new brothers? Any of the brothers in here that's fairly new? No? Okay, one, two, okay. Now when I say new, maybe like what, six months? Six months, something like that, okay. So, one of the things that I want everyone to get a good grasp on is that the majority of our walk in this truth is not going to be because of the deep breakdowns. It's not going to be because of the heavy parables in the Bible. Mm -mm. The things that's going to mess us up is basic law, basic moral law, civil law, these kinds of laws here. So my question was, what are the, uh, the five sets of laws? And I named them, I already said five sets, so you know that it's not six, it's not four, three. So who can tell me the five sets of laws? Now I know this sounds basic, but we're gonna dig it in, dig in a little bit. The five sets of laws, who can answer that? Okay, is there a microphone out there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The five sets of laws in the Bible. <clears throat> uh, shalom, leadership. Shalom, uh, how are you? What's your name? Uh, soldier A-Rai. Soldier? A-Rai. A-Rai. Yes, sir. How long have you been a soldier? Um, not good with time. Um, I mean, you know, you ain't got to be exact, like give me the exact date. Uh, maybe February 20 something last year. You ain't got to do that. This uh, is approximate. I've been in here for almost two years, so. Okay. Um, that's so about a year at least? Maybe a, a year. A year? Yeah, so, okay, so, all right. Um, you got uh, ceremonial. A ceremonial laws deal with, deals with what? Um, the, like the high holy days. Okay. Um, you got, um, the uh, sacrificial law. Okay. Um, you got. Um, what does the sacrificial law deals with? Um, like the atoning of your sins or the. Um, the sacrificial <coughs> law deals with the atoning of your sins. But tell me more about that particular law. Uh, well, th there were certain laws that we. Uh, there were certain sacrifices that we had to make to uh, atone for our sins. Um, what do you mean when you say certain sacrifices? Give me. Um, Give me a little bit more of what, what you're saying. Like, uh, if you... Um, I mean, just give me a loose... I mean, to explain it to somebody who doesn't know. Somebody, if I was to throw sacrificial law out to somebody, what would that mean to them? How would you explain how that works? Uh, well, I would basically tell them that uh, the, sacri the sacrificial law was a law that pertained to um, someone killing an animal um, to atone for uh, a wrongdoing. Okay. Uh, so the blood or um, which represents uh, like Christ and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in the uh, because in the New Testament it said what it said there shall be no what uh, um, 
Edo was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about that yet. There shall be no forgiveness without get it. Hold it. Let's read it. You know the more? Book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission. There's no remission of sins. That's the point. So blood had to be shed in order for for the for the person who was guilty of breaking that law for that law, for that sin to be removed for or the or the punishment of that sin to be taken from them. Yes, sir. Okay. So the the reason why I'm reading this is because we was talking about the sacrificial law, right? The sacrificial law was a set of laws that governed that told you which animals to sacrifice for certain sins. Okay, so that was that's the purpose of that law. It tells you to use a turtle dove for this, an ox for that, a sheep for this. That's the reason why I said to be able to go into it like that, to understand that there was laws on what animals to sacrifice for particular sins. That's what the law governed. So you with me? That's that's the point there. So that's how you explain that to them. Okay. So we got. What, what was the first one that you said? We got a uh, um, uh, ceremonial ceremonial law, to which dealt with the holidays, the high holy days, right? Uh, the the Sabbath, Sabbath, Day of Atonement, things like that, right? Yes, and then you uh, said the laws sac of sacrifice, sacrificial law. the sacrificial law. Uh, what are what's some other ones? Um, this, uh, civil law. The civil law. Let's talk about that one. What is a civil law? Give me an example of a, ci a civil law. You know what? Let me get, because I'm going to come back to you. Let me see. Somebody else? Can somebody else pick it up? Civil law. Civil laws. Okay, we're in the back. Civil, law. Civil laws will be uh, love thy brother as thyself. Okay. Uh, yes, give me an example of a civil law. He said, love thy brother as thyself. Okay. Um, mm. Give me an example. And, it's an, and when I say give me an example, you don't really have to deep. You don't really have to dig deep. It's very common what I'm asking. Give me a civil law. So uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's explain civil first. What does it mean, civil? When we say civil law, what is that talking about? Uh, be kind. Be kind. When you think of civil, what word comes to mind? Brothers. Brothers. Okay. Wait, uh, Anyone in relation with you. Anyone that's in relation with you. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, can we go a little deeper? What other word comes from civil? Civilization. Civilization. Civilized. Meaning proper behavior. Right? Between people. Between brothers and sisters. Things like that. So give me an example of a civil law. If a brother doesn't have, brother or sister doesn't have a place to stay, um, I have a place that with extra rooms, then he should be able to uh, go to that place without an issue. Okay, that's kindness. How long you, what was your rank? I'm a brother. Okay, that's good, that's good. I'll, 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 I, first of all, I, I'm glad that you uh, stood up as well. Now get back to Mike, I'm, I'm gonna work with him. Um, so, I'm glad that you uh, stood up and, and spoke, so this is our day. Um, when I say a civil law, this mean that there's a law in the Bible that pertains to how people deal with each other in, in civility or in civilization or in a civilized manner. That's what I'm asking. Now, how long have you been here? How long have you been here? In this? About two years. About two years? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me an example of, in two years, I, it should have came out. And I'm not putting you on the spot, because I, I, I bring this around to anybody. This, this is our day, as brothers. You with me? Yes, sir. So, give me an example. <coughs> give me a law that deals with civil. This is an easy one. Huh? Um, Mm -hmm. well, I'm getting something e e easier than that. Uh, so y'all think I'm going hard, brothers? Going all into the, going. I'm, what I'm talking about is super easy. God, come on. Adultery. Okay, adultery. That's good. That's good. 
Um, so you gave me a law, but I want something. Okay, you said adultery. That's good. What about in the New Testament? I'm giving you a hint now. When I say in the, in the New Testament, what am I talking about? Civil? Give me an example. Think of it. Yes. Who who might know? Who can help him out? Who can help him out? Okay. Can we get the definition of civil? Yeah, yeah. Can, uh, can you put the definition of, of civil? Maybe that'll help you all out. relating to ordinary citizens and their concerns as distinct from military or ecclesiastical matters. Uh, that first part, relating to ordinary citizens and their concerns. That's good. That's good. So I hope that helped. The second one says relating to private relations between members of a community, non-criminal. Yes. That is good. So who had the hand up that was going to help the brother? Uh, Matthew 18, how you deal with your you, brother? There you go right there. You heard that? Now, do you know the reason why I wanted to go there? Because a lot of times we look so deep into things and we miss the obvious. Matthew 18 is about a, is a civil law. That's dealing with civility. If there's an issue that goes on between you and your brother or sister against sister, the civilized way of handling it is applying that scripture. Because the objective of applying that is to bring what civility between the two parties. It's to restore my brother, to restore my sister in a civilized manner. That's the point. There's an offense that occurred between me and the brother or the sister and another sister and this, and the art or the, the issue could separate them, could cause division, could bring hatred, could bring uh, envy, could bring all kinds of things that would break civilization, that would break civility, that will destroy a nation. So God put an end, our law, to apply a measure of civility whenever there's an offense that occurs between two civilians of the nation. Y'all all right? So when you go to your brother, the objective of going to him or her is to restore the brother or the sister. It's to bring them back, to bring them back to whole. It's to remove, to deal with the issue, squash the issue, and I've gained my brother. I've gained my sister. That's the point of that. Okay? Well, that's, that's, that's what brings the peace back. But we have not really learned that as Israelites, as people. Some of us have taken that scripture and because they've read it when it says that the first one didn't listen so they went and got two more witnesses and, two, and, and came all the way down to they brought the matter before the church and all of that. Some people look to use that as a way of getting even with their brothers or sisters and getting them in kind of some trouble. Trying to set them up. I've seen situations like that. Trying to set them up. You don't, you don't really want to restore the brother or the sister. You go to the brother and you go to the sister and you say, this is, a, this is an issue that we have between each other. Can we resolve it? You don't really want it resolved. You, wanna, you, you want to use that to say, he, I applied Matthew 18, but they didn't really want it. So now I want to take them to two or three witnesses. And then you want to say the same thing. Then you, then you coerce the witnesses and then you bring them before the body and then the next thing you know, boom, the person's gone. Why? Because you had hatred for that brother or that sister. We've seen that many times in Israel. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, sir. So, the objective of Matthew 18, even all the way up to the very end, is about restoring that brother and that sister. I'm going to show you that. Give me um, Thessalonians. Um, where it says, but treat them I'm not trying, I'm trying not to say it. Yeah, that's it, I heard it. That's the one, read that. The book of 2 Thessalonians, 
chapter 3 and verse 14. Sometimes, because like I'm pointing out, the civil law of Matthew 18, and I'm going to focus there because with the reason why I wanted to go to Matthew 18 is because in many of the cases that you read in the Old Testament about the civil laws between each other falls up underneath the umbrella of what we're reading here in Matthew 18. Uh, read. Read the verse. And if any man obey not our word by so, this... If any man obey not our word, go ahead. By this epistle. By this letter. Note that man. Note that man. So what this is saying here is that Matthew 18, I'm going to just use that as an example. Matthew 18 has been used on the first step. The brother or the sister could not gain their brother. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Then it goes to the second step. You got the two witnesses. You bring it, you bring it forth, and he still didn't want to get it. So now it goes before the body. And even in, the, and in that point, the judgment is, is that this person has to go, right? Read. And have no company with him. And have no company with him. So the brother or the sister is put out of the congregation, like it says in, um, in, in Matthew 18. Treat him as a publican and a heathen, right? Go ahead. That he may be ashamed. But the point of that happening is to bring shame upon the brother or the sister. What is that shame supposed to do? What is that shame supposed to do? Who knows? Back over here. What is that shame? Read that again. That he may be ashamed. Read the whole thing again. And if any man obey not our word. By he, didn't, he didn't obey when the Matthew 18 was brought out. And, and they showed on the law that he or she was breaking concerning them. Go ahead. By this epistle, note that man. Note that man. And have no company with him. So that means that person has to go. But there's a purpose for why. Go ahead. That he may be ashamed. That he may be ashamed. So in his being ashamed, what is that ashamed is supposed to do? That's my question. What is ashamed is supposed to do? Brother Ruben, um, that ashamedness is supposed to make him examine himself and uh, want to come back after he repents. Yes. Say it again. Say it louder. Make him examine himself and make him repent. Make him examine himself and do what? And repent. Now, what's the difference between that and the very first part? At Matthew 18 at the first step. What's the difference? Read the Matthew 18 again at the beginning of it. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. So you telling it to him alone. So this is you and the brother or the sister and the sister. Go ahead. If he shall hear thee. If he shall hear thee. Thou hast gained thy brother. If he shall hear thee. You might have been telling him and you're making him feel shame of what he did. You're making her feel ashamed of what she did. You have gained thy brother. So you see. You're looking at steps being taken, but the result is still meant to be the same. Y'all understand that? Okay, so that's what I wanted to point out. So God gave us some very good laws. He gave, he gave us the rule book on how to straighten us out, and we need straightening. Bad. How many of y'all saw Deacon Asaph's uh, class last night? Hands up high. Lord have mercy. I couldn't believe, well, I kind of expected it anyway, but how many of y'all were surprised at the level of, well, I, maybe, it, maybe it wasn't even. What do y'all think about it? Let me just get some uh, feedback. What did y'all think? What, who saw it? Uh, give him a mic. Give him a mic. What did, you, what did you get out of that thing? What did, what did you see? When you, when, you, when you saw that, what did you see? Oh, Shalom, Baruch. Uh, what I witnessed was uh, the evilness of our people. That we're willing to put our bath, put our mouths towards something without even having the facts or knowledge of, of a situation. Right. Yeah. You, so you saw that. I saw that. You so what, what, you you said that was what? What did you call it? Evil. Wickedness being displayed. Wickedness from, being displayed. Give me people. give me some levels of I mean, wicked. The way they were just um going on a rant without having the knowledge of a whole situation. 
Okay. You know, um, come and bring about situations that wasn't wasn't even really being effective in their own local area, but they can find you know protocol to suit of what's going on in a whole different country. Can you imagine how, what you just said was heavy? Yeah. How many of y'all saw that? Uh -huh. Raise your hands, sisters. Y'all saw that, didn't you? Here's a man talking about doing all kinds of. I'm ready to go and be a zealot, right. do all kind of stuff, sounding big. <laughs> Another one talking about some take gun, go shoot up. Meanwhile, there's kids right there in this neighborhood that's lost, strayed, yeah. robbed, they ain't said a damn thing. So, the level of evil, do you see we need these laws, don't you? Right. Our people hate law, brother. Our people hate order. They hate paperwork. They hate those things because some of us come out of a field, let me just put it this way. Some of us come out of a field where we worked in areas where paperwork was everywhere. I, I particularly worked as, uh, I worked in a hospital, I worked as a, as a uh, union delegate, and I used to have to defend people and read all kinds of policies and stuff like that. And the stuff that I would, the, the stuff that I would see the Negroes do, our people, I'm talking about, because there's, 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 there's a, a whole variety of people in there. But the majority of the people that get caught doing dumb stuff was us, which was crazy. And it's only until they know that there's cameras somewhere, that's when they straighten up. Why is that? In the field, in the field where I come from, we said that's how we keep keep them honest, keeping them honest. You walk in a place and you say they say this this uh, area is being monitored by video surveillance. You, you straighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Why is that? Because it's something called accountability and responsibility. We know we hate it. We hate respond. We hate being responsible. Where did that come from? Slavery came out of slavery. That's Deuteronomy 28, I'm gonna read that in a minute. Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48, that's what, that's what, that, that's what that ties in, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But, when that, when those things come into play, and accountability is attached to your name, that's when we get nervous. We don't like that thing. That, and that's really a shame, you know. Um, where was I at? What was I reading that? Yeah, read that again. Let me get my thought back again. The book of I, Matthew. I, I jumped off of what I was going to say for, for a reason. I was getting ready to go a little deeper onto that, but I'm going to... Go ahead, read. Read again. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. The purpose of that is maybe I can win my brother back, I can win my sister back, with just letting them know that they have offended me. The law says X, Y, and Z. Oh, I'm sorry, sister. I didn't mean to do that to you. I was out of the spirit that day, I apologize. Same thing with the brother. I, I had a bad day at work or whatever, and I took it out on my brother, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry about that, brother. You've made peace. That's what the Lord wants. That could go all the way up to a brother or sister being put out of the body. And even when they're put out of the body, go back to that Thessalonians again. Second Thessalonians chapter three and verse 14. Mm -hmm. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle. The, the word in this case would be you bringing the, bringing the offense to them and letting them know. So listen, the Lord said that we should not suffer sin one upon another. You've offended me, brother. You've offended me, sister. Go ahead. Note that man. Note that man because he did not want to hear it. He did not want to accept the fact that you brought it to him. You did not want to accept the fact that two more witnesses were brought to try to help you see the picture even then. You still didn't want to get it. Now it's brought before the whole body. You still didn't want to get it. The Most High still wants to try to win that soul back. But it's very dangerous when you have to go to all those different levels. It's best if you can learn it from the beginning. Because if you have to go to step two, step three, there's consequences that's going to come along with it. Satan is going to start to inhabit your spirit. Satan gonna start to tell you that them niggas is wicked. This is happening, this happening. And like when you read in the book of Hebrews, it talks about a root of bitterness also gets into our people. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? 
when it talks about a root of bitterness because of chastisement. You know what I'm talking about? Let's read it. Let's read it real quick. I don't see enough, I don't see enough heads not. Um, I think it's like verse 12. Let me look at it. Hold on. Start with verse 8. Hebrews 12. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Give me a second. A lot of times our people don't want to be corrected. We're still talking about civil laws now. Y'all with me? We don't want to write. We don't want to be, when our brother and our sister come to us and tell us about us being offended, we turn away from them, some of us. We don't want to hear it. We get high-minded. We get arrogant. Who are you to correct me? Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Chastisement is supposed to make you better. Chastisement is, is an exercise that exercise the demons out of us. That's what chastisement does. It's the same thing as a trial. The reason why we go through trials is to exercise demons from us. Demons that have been encrusted in our spirit during our sojourn in Babylon. Y'all understand what I'm bringing out? As we, as we were brought up in this system, we've learned evil. We were incubated in evil. We've been baptized in evil. We've been boiled, hard fried, and hard wired in evil. So the Lord said, you know what? I have to send some trials to help purge that thing from you. And you know where the trials come from? Congregation. Your brothers and sisters seeing that there's an evil spirit on you, trying to bring it to you, say, my brother and my sister, I see something's bothering you and it's affecting your relationship with me and other brothers or sisters or whatever. And you're supposed to be able to take that in a civil manner and say, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister, for showing your love to me, like it says in Leviticus. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and not suffer sin upon them. So when they bring you the issue, they're doing it out of love to restore you. Read. If ye endure chastening. If you endure the trials, the fiery trials like the, like the Bible says. Go ahead. God deals with you as with sons. God deals with you as with sons because as you purge the evil from you, he begins to open your understanding up to more righteousness. For you to practice the law better. For you to become better brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement. If you be without chastisement, we don't want to be corrected by anybody. Go ahead. Whereof all are partakers. We are partakers in the nation of Israel. This is our book. Then are ye bastards. So and the Most High said then you are bastards. Because bastards are children that don't have fathers that take care of them. And not sons. And you're not the sons of the Most High. So do we want to be bastards, brothers and sisters? No. Sir. no. So when the Lord chastises us, we're supposed to be happy about that because it shows that our God loves us. When our brothers and sisters come to us and tell us that they have a, that they see a spirit on us or there's something wrong, we should examine what they say before you condemn them. Let's examine to see what it is. Go ahead. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirits the most and live? Exactly, the Most High. There's the Father of Spirits is the Most High and angels. Go ahead. For they verily, for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So, our, regular, our parents chastised us when we were young, but the Most High is talking about chastising us to bring us into holiness, righteousness, to be that better example. Go ahead. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. No chastisement at the present when you're going through your trials is joyous. Nobody, n nobody would, uh, I'm sure n everybody would agree with that. Nobody would go through a, a, a trial or chastisement with joy. It, it's, it's terrible. Who wants to go through a trial? Nobody. But when you go through your trial, you're supposed to go through your trial with an attitude of understanding the, why you're, the reason why you're going through the trial. Go ahead. But grievous. 
Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit. Afterwards, afterwards, the trial, the chastisement yielded forth the peaceable fruit. In other words, it makes you better. That's what the discipline does. When you see the military men being trained in, 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 uh, in what's the word, in formation, you see them standing at attention. That brings, that brings a level of discipline to them. What makes them better brothers. What makes them better fathers. That's what that, that's what that discipline does. Read that again. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when we exercise, when we are, read that again, let me see, the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised, we're exercised in our trials. So we become better examples of what the Lord is showing us. Read on. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Wherefore, because of when you're in your trials, what did the Most High say? He said what? Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. What is The Lord is saying this for you to do this during your trial. He says, during your trial, when you're being chastised, while you're being chastised, we're supposed to lift up our hands in our trial. Why? Because you're going, and this is what I say, going into your trial with an up attitude. Going into your trial with the understanding of why you're going through the trial. When you go through your trial like that, then you, you won't look at it and be despising it. You'll look at it as, it's, as, as is a lesson. Lord, I'm glad you're showing me something that I did not understand before. Yes, it's uncomfortable like it says, no trial seems joyous. Yes, I understand that it's painful. Yes, I understand it, but I know that you're showing me something that I did not know prior. Read that again. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Lift up the hands that hang down. In other words, rejoice in your trials. Rejoice in your tribulation because you understand the purpose of it. Go ahead. And, and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet. Meaning walk straight. Don't start sinning. Keep the commandments in your trial. Let's keep, keep, your, keep the commandments in the correction. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That's what that's talking about. The Most High wants you to keep the laws in your mind even in your trial. Read. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. But the Most High wants us to be healed. He doesn't want us to become uh, angry and bitter. He wants us to relish the, the trials and use it to our benefit to teach us something. Go ahead. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Because so, if you don't do this, you ain't getting the kingdom. If we don't learn how to endure the chastisement of the Lord, if we don't learn how to endure when our brothers and sisters correct us, you talk about you're going to get the kingdom. No! Your brothers and sisters try to tell you certain things that you're doing wrong, and you get mad and leave? You talking about something, you're going to try to start something and set up something else? You ain't getting no kingdom. Forget it. The most I'm going to bring you to nothing. Read that again. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That ain't, that's not a typo. That means exactly what it says. Without you understanding that, you will not see the kingdom. If you don't endure the chastisement, your brothers are trying to correct you. Councils, brothers pulling brothers to the side, trying to show them where they're erring at. Same thing with sisters. Try to show them their error. I'm going to go do my own thing. Going to get a little website, put a little banner up, some stuff behind them, talk about something, they're doing something. The mess becomes garbage. <laughs> Read. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Hold it. See, I never really dug, dug into this thing. Read that again. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Of the grace of God. Many times we read this, we never really pulled that word out. The grace of God. Read it again. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. What is the grace of God? Mercy. 
The Lord is giving us mercy because he knows how we are, but he gives us mercy in our, in our chastisement, giving us mercy in our trials, in our being correction, in our being corrected. And he says you have the grace to get yourself together in your correction. You have the grace to get yourself together in your correction and chastisement, in your trial. Because we're trying to get it together. When we get it together, we say to our brother, we say to our sister, yes, I understand. We say to our brother that's correcting us, I understand. I repent. Thank you. That's how that's supposed to go. But in this Babylon, we have not learned that. We've, we've come up with this me, myself, and I garbage and no unity of the brothers. No unity of the sisters. And that's exactly why we're in the mess that we're in today as a people. Read that again. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. The root of bitterness, a root of bitterness. That's what you have. Brothers get corrected. Sisters get corrected. I'm out. I'm leaving. As long as nobody correct them, they're okay. They just sit there. But when the correction comes, because everyone has to be corrected. We need correction. We need correction because we were, we, were, we were bathed in evil. We were incubated in evil. That's a word that I like to use. Rotisseried in evil. Hard boiled in evil. So the Lord says I got to put fiery trials on you. Give me that Sirach too. The book of Sirach chapter 2 and two. verse 1. Yes sir. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Prepare thy soul for temptation. All of this is still dealing with civil laws here, brothers and sisters. Read that again. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your, prepare your soul for temptation. You want to know why that's heavy? We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The regular going to church. Church scriptures. It's in the Bible. The so-called Christians are supposed to understand this here. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Y'all know how it goes, right? Then it says, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not. What's the part? What said lead us not? Is that the next stanza? Yes, sir. Lead us not. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The temptation that it's talking about is your own demons. The Lord's Prayer is covering this. Lead us not in temptation. My temptation is not going to be the same as his temptation or your temptation. So I'm not going to be led by some man wearing a polka dot dress. But that might be somebody else's temptation. Can y'all dig what I'm saying? Yes, different people have different temptations. So the Lord is talking about temptations that pertain to you. Lead us not into temptation. So go back to that Sirach. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright. Set your mind. First of all, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Meaning your own lusts, your own desires, your own demons. Not my demons, not his demons, not her demons, but your own demons is going to be a tempt to you because it was something that you used to do all day long, all the years of your life. So it has become an encrusted part of your spirit. So when you come into the fire of trials, the fiery trials are supposed to burn that off. And if you come to be tried, you're supposed to be glad because you, you recognize that these temptations are an impediment for you getting the kingdom. And if you're looking at it that way, you'll be glad when your brother corrects you. You'll be glad when your sister corrects you. That's how that goes. But if you hate that, you don't want to be told anything, and you want to hold on to that demon, that same demon is going to later come back with a vengeance and take you out. I'm talking about that unclean spirit. That comes back with seven more demons. That's what that's talking about. Y'all understand? Y'all yes, with me so far? Yes, sir. Read on. 
Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Constantly endure, meaning that some brothers and sisters might have to receive more correction than others. Or it seems that way anyway. But the scriptures say constantly endure. Meaning I might need a little bit more correction than the next brother. Because I might have had that kind of life. The scriptures say don't despise the chastening of the Lord. And don't develop a root of bitterness because of it. Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. That's what you're seeing on YouTube. That's what you're seeing on Facebook. Make haste in time of trouble. Every one of those dudes fled judgment. Fled because of chastisement. All of them. And if they and if they and if they suspected that judgment was coming, well, let me slide on out of here before the axe come on me. And it wasn't going to really be an axe; it was just going to be correction, chastisement. Why? To turn my brother, to gain my brother back. That's the objective of correction. The Lord says He's not going to put anything on us to break us. He said, "You all, He give you a way to escape." So all of the trials that he put on us, he gives you a way for you to get yourselves right. Because if that was the case, he would have never called you. But the reason why so many of our people are called and not chosen is because they did not apply the diligence that's required in your calling. Give me that. Peter's 110, something like that. Yes, one of your scriptures. And give me the one in, well, we know about the one in, what is it, Matthew 22, 14? Give me that first. Matthew 22, 14. Read that first. Y'all got to look at these things. All of us are called in here, but we got some real work to do. And that's the reason why these laws are so important. Here we're talking about civil laws. Matthew uh, 22, 14, what does it say? The book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 14. For many are called. Hold it. For many of us are called. All of us are called in. The Lord called you. The Lord called you. You, 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 you. Me. These brothers. Called us in here. Our, connect, our connection to each other is through this Bible. The Lord called us to be unified in this. This is what, this is our relationship is based on our application of what's written in this Bible. That's where our relationship comes from. This right here is the binding tie. This right here are the cords that unifies us. So when he called you, when he called me, when he called these brothers, called you sisters, he called us in to abide by this. Read. But few are chosen. Hold it. What makes them, what makes them to be the few that are chosen? He says, for many are called. We're all called in here. But, what's, but what do we need to do to turn that calling into a sure election? You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So how do we make our calling and election sure? Because we were all called. But how do we make that calling a sure election? By doing what? Giving diligence. Diligence. Diligence applies to not running when you're being corrected. Diligence means that when my brothers or my sisters apply the law to me, I examine what they're saying and see, and then I examine myself, examine my own actions and say, you know what, brother or sister, I'm sorry. Because you brought the matter to me. I had a chance to look at it and see that I did error. I did offend you. I'm sorry. I repent. Do you forgive me? The brother and the sister say, yes, it's over. That's how that works. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. So the scripture said, give diligence, read it. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. To make your calling and election sure. So we can get it. We can be the elect. We can make it. But it's up to you. When the chest, because the Lord says, for well, any of us that come into this truth, we're going to be tried. That's what the scriptures say. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. He didn't say there was no might in it. 
Ain't no maybes in that. He says, when you come, you will be tried. And when you're being tried, you're supposed to apply the diligence to making sure that you keep these commandments. To make sure that your calling is a sure election. And you see a lot of brothers have not done that. Sisters have not done that. And that's, and that's in this Bible. When you read in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, you read about the four groups of Israelites. The four categories, so you can understand. All Israelites on this planet is going to go through one of those four categories. You want to be in that last one, the one whose fruit was 24, 60 fold and all that. That's the one you want to be in. You don't want to be in the first three that got taken out. And why did they get taken out? Because they could not endure. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be that. When the chastisement came, judgment came, they ran. Most of us ain't dealing with that. And then when they run, what happens? R-U-I-C. Root of bitterness. The most I just showing it to you. I was looking at that stuff last night and I could not really, and I mean, I said I couldn't believe it. It was so, I, I guess the, it's, it's not unbelievable, but it's, it, the, the word to me is, they make the Bible real. I put it like that. If I didn't see my people act the way they act, I don't know, I, mean, I, I might be doubting. But when I see what I see, I said, man, this Bible is bad. It's on point. And I'm just looking at the stuff. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, read that. Said you got it. And bring it out. Bring out what you want to bring out. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm going to. Y'all bring out your points. I'm going somewhere else. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Right, it says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. The key word in here is the fiery trials. We just read over uh, in Sirach. It says, when thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. That temptation is going into, into those fiery trials. Like you see, uh, the bishop is bringing up, the deacon is bringing out the things that um, is happening within the body. Those trials is meant for us to go through the fire and, and purge all of the dross out of us. Y'all understand what it means to be dross? I work with metal and I have to cut out certain parts. And when you're cutting out those parts, it's certain things that are no good and we call it dross. You have to take a, uh, a chisel and knock off the dross because it's undesirable. You understand? So when, it, when you put fire on these, these objects, some of those things are not going to make it through. All right, now you could be that dross, but that's not what you want to be. You don't want to be dross. You want to come through the fire to be that product, which the scripture says is gold. You want to make sure that you go, all right? Uh, read on. As though some strange thing happened unto you. So it's not strange because we have the understanding of what trials and tribulations that we are going to go through. We have to go through this. In Sirach, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Like you said, that is not a suggestion. That is a statement made and it's going to happen, all right? It says, uh, set thy heart aright. It's up to you to have, have your mind prepared to go through this temptation. Each one of us are not going to face the same things. Uh, we may not be able to see those trials um, physically that you're going through. You understand what I'm saying? But you're going to go through trials. All right. Uh, is that it? Read uh, re verse 13. Verse 13. But rejoice. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. So what should we do when, when those trials come upon us? But rejoice. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. So we understand that the Most High is chastening us. And that this makes us sons to the Most High. Read on. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Right. So we go through this to purge out those things that we don't need in our spirit so that we can have joy at the end, all right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just right quick. Give me uh, Ephesians, uh, start at four and one. The book of Ephesians, chapter four and verse one. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. The prisoner of who? 
the prisoner of the Lord. Understand, we are prisoners of the Lord. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mm. Say that again, brother. Good thing. That's a good thing, right? You're not your own no more, am I right? You're a prisoner of the Lord. I'm not just talking about anybody. I'm mean, talking about the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read on. Beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith. Hold on, that word, that you walk worthy of what? That ye walk worthy of the vocation. What is the vocation? Your purpose. Why are you here? You have found your purpose in the Lord. That's why you're here. That's what you're here to seek for. What is my purpose in the Lord? For those of you that don't know why you're here or those of you don't understand, this is why you are here, to find that purpose. Okay? Read on. Wherewith ye are called. Wherewith, wherewith ye are what? Wherewith ye are called. That's why you were called. You have a purpose. Okay, read on. With all lowliness uh -huh. and meekness, with long suffering. With what? With long suffering. It's going to take a little time. It's going to take them long suffering. Read on. Forbearing one another in love. Forbearing what? Forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. Now, here's the point I want to get to. Those of you that, that, that the point that we was making here, of those that just not making their election or calling sure, this right here tell you if you want to make your election and call it sure right here. Read. Verse 3. Enduring to keep the unity. Read Say that again. Endearing. Endeavoring. 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 Oh, Endeavoring. I'm sorry. Endeavoring to keep the unity. Endeavoring. That means fighting. With all you got, you're endeavoring to keep the unity. Mm -hmm. Of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of what? The bond of peace. Read on. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. In one hope of your calling. Okay? You want to make your calling and election sure? It's telling you right there. You'll see those people that's endeavoring, fighting, okay? To keep that unity. That's what the lesson we went into, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's the title of the lesson. Endeavoring to keep that unity. And in peace. Am I right? Yeah. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.